what's up welcome back to my channel i have a very exciting video today this is my friend natalie and Hi everyone she works with the ngos here in we're in the Ka valley this is the place that holds most of the syrian refugees in lebanon and do you want to explain a bit more about what we're going to be doing today yeah so i work with an ngo called maps which stands for multi-aid programs and today we're going to give natasha a tour of the different stuff we do and yeah you guys can learn a little bit more about the refugee situation in lebanon so Lebanon has the highest refugees per capita globally, and this region has the largest number in the country. So for every three people, one person is a Syrian, a displaced Syrian. The Kaza Valley, it's called the Ka Valley, and over the mountains that we were looking at across the valley, it's literally Syria. So we're right on the Syrian border. We're super east in Lebanon, as you can see in the map here. Muhammad, and he actually is one of the teachers here at MAPS, and he's a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer, yeah. And are you from Lebanon? No, I'm from Syria. You're from Syria? Okay, amazing. I just asked Natalie how many students are here at MAPS, and she's going to explain because it's kind of complicated. So MAPS is a multi-sectorial NGO, which means that we do education, we do relief work, we do health work, and we also do livelihoods. Um, our schools are located not here at the office, but they're located in the refugee camps. So in the camps, in our primary schools, we have about 3,000 students across the 10 different schools that we have. And then here at the MAPS Center is where we do vocational training and innovation training. And this is where we have our science labs, our computers, and all the different equipment that Mohammed is gonna show you soon. Who are your do your donors? Like, they, they're usually quite big, right? These days, there's a lot of donor fatigue and people are not as interested in supporting Syrian refugees anymore. Especially because, as you guys know, there's an economic crisis in Lebanon. Even Lebanese families are suffering. The humanitarian space is changing now, like a renewed interest to support Lebanese families in addition to Syrians. So yeah. there's a bit of a competition happening yeah. for NGO funding. But we're funded, like our education program is funded by the Norwegian Embassy, which okay. has been like one of our greatest partners. Yeah, because there's like a lot of politics that get involved with like when people are giving money, they want to really be in charge of like where that money is exactly. going. Exactly, exactly. But they're not here on the grounds, like so they don't understand like where the money really needs to go a lot of times. So it's great when like the people who are actually working here day to day, they know what's happening. So it's better if they can decide. Also like what makes MAPS a unique NGO is that it's led by refugees and it's directed by a Syrian refugee himself. And the core mission and, and vision and, and the values of MAPS is to inspire the refugee community to work for themselves and to support refugees to support refugees. Incredible. Well, we're here with Mohammed, who we introduced and He's going to show us some things. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Manar. Manar? So Manar is right now doing code to light up this light from literally the laptop, which is so incredible. Where did you learn? Uh, in, going in Syria. Oh, incredible. So MAPS runs 10 primary schools and nine of them are located inside the refugee camps. And then one of them is here in the office. It is really rare, rare for refugee children to even have access to education at all. You may even see like when we're driving, you'll see kids working because child yeah. child labor is a huge, huge issue here. Yeah, every day that I've been here, in Lebanon, it's like I see children working and they have to work like maybe their parents um, can't afford them or they kind of send them off to work and they have no choice and they can't even be adopted because they technically still have parents. 
like with a lot of kids that you see like begging in the streets. Yeah, it's kind of taboo. Yeah, it's super taboo. Now we're going to show you guys our robotics program, which is kind of like the heart and soul of Max, and it's something that like we're super proud of. Let's provide innovative education and robotics engineering education as a way to target mental health. So like if you use your brain at the highest level, like that can trigger like a positive effect. So we started the robotics team called Team Hope of Syria. And this team entered into a small robotics competition in American University in Beirut. They were the only refugee team there and they came in first place. Wow. And it kind of is this moment where it was like, this isn't just like some cute NGO project. Like this yeah. is real. Since that win, um, it was in 2016, since then, been competing all over the world. They met Barack Obama, they went to the White House, like the team has been kind of like all over the world. Okay, so RoboG is this other project that kind of stemmed from this robot, correct? And Natalie's gonna explain more about it because she just showed me it the other day and it's actually really incredible. Okay, so this is RoboG or the original one. Um, RoboG stands for Robot Refugee. And the idea came as like, this is the mascot of, of Team Hope, of the robotics team. And it was kind of used as a way to change the narrative on refugee capabilities on, and on, on refugees' lives, basically. In 2019, the team traveled to Dubai and they competed in like the world's largest robotics championship ever. It's like every single country is represented in this championship. And so Team Hope being refugees didn't, don't have a country. So they got permission to be Team Hope of refugees. In the finals, it was Team Hope, Switzerland and Germany, and they won. And it just like showed the world like what refugees are actually capable of. Yeah. Um, and this was when, as an organization, we really were like, this is incredible. Yeah. We need to start doing like more advocacy around like raise the standards for humanitarian aid yeah. because providing basic literacy is just not enough. This is the Crochet Studio and this is my favorite place at MAP. We call it the Crochet Community Collective and it is a women's economic empowerment initiative. The Crochet Women, um, they're earning a monthly income from this project because we're selling the dolls around the world. And then part of the money is going to their livelihoods, of course. And then the other remaining profits are going directly into our education program. So I told you before, we have 10 schools. One of these 10 schools is funded by this project but our goal and our dream is to be able to fund all of our education program from the community itself and it's not simply just about funding a school it's also about creativity it's about community it's about strengthening social networks between the women and before joining this collective like they will always talk about how they felt kind of isolated they didn't really have a social life they didn't really have a purpose or like any kind of like real like meaning in their lives so this is like a dignified work opportunity at the same time it's fun this is the crochet roboji she's basically like a composite character where the story of roboji as the superhero character is a combination of all of the different stories of the robotic students mm -hmm. so we turned um, the real live stories of the en of the young engineers into roboji when a lot of people the world thinks of Syria, we think, oh, poor Syria, like this country's a mess, like the people don't have anything. But let's remember Syria before the revolution, before all of this chaos started, these people were so educated. Like they had the oldest cities in the world. They had such strong like education and just like culture. Everyone had a life there. They were, they were somebody and they had their occupations and everything. So these people, they're not just like coming in from a country that's like has never had anything. Like Syria was built, like Syria existed. So yeah, it's really important to remember that because these students and these people, like they're bright, they're smart and they have like that drive. And of course, like MAPS is giving them the opportunity to just like reach their full potential. The link of course will be in the description. So make sure you check it out. I'm getting my RoboG right now. I just, got my RoboG. You can purchase these down below. I'm super excited to have this. Um, she's super cute and she's handmade. I travel a lot 
and I love going to different places and buying different things from women because these women are such hard workers not only that but they create incredible things like I buy dresses from them I buy jewelry I buy things like this like you can get so many different things from around the world from these small businesses, female entrepreneurs that go directly to these women to support themselves and their families and give them independence. And I think it's so freaking important for women to be independent and not be dependent on their husbands or men because we are equal and we're honestly more than equal. We're freaking awesome. Women are amazing and they're so resilient. And if I can support them in any way, I want to. And so I wanted to get this RoboG and I want to actually open up this dialogue about female entrepreneurs around the world. As you know, I'm kind of a female entrepreneur trying to like with my own business, my own company. So I want to know what your thoughts are on that. If you let me know in the comments on if you're a female entrepreneur or what's your idea of entrepreneurship and women in this space because it was a very male dominated space for a long time but I think it's starting to open up and there's more of a dialogue between male and female entrepreneurs and the different kinds of entrepreneurs that can exist because there was very much so this idea of like being more in your masculine energy and just go getter and this and that but I think it's starting to shift a little bit like there's a lot of feminine energy coming into this space which I think is really cool and interesting and I love seeing seeing the shift so let me know in the comments what your ideas of female entrepreneurs are i'm so excited to take my robo g home let me know if you're getting a robo g or one of the other crocheted animals i would love to see pictures of them if you want to send me them on instagram <laughs>which is actually the refugee camp and we're at the school that is right behind a marsh refugee camp and the students actually were just out here and they all went inside to class from their break and they are freaking adorable they're so cute really well behaved they were all speaking english to me i was really impressed so the school is actually in caravans as you can kind of see behind me, these children are learning and getting an education here, but they're able to take their education with them wherever they go, whether that be back to Syria or another country or wherever they end up. Um, their education for anybody is something that you always have with you. And I think that's really special. So the students have um, Arabic class, English class, science and math, and also life skills as the main subjects. And then once a week, they get to go to the MAPS training center where we just were to do robotics training, STEM training, and they have like the innovation lab. This is their main primary school. So we just visited the different classrooms here at El Marj. I'm really filled with like mixed emotions because here are all these beautiful, bright children who have these teachers that genuinely care and are, and are giving their life and devoting their life to providing an education for them. But let's remember these children are living behind the school in the refugee camp and so are their teachers. And these, these classrooms, like they, look at like they've painted them they planted this garden and it's they've really taken the space and made it as beautiful as can be and they're really putting that effort to create a really beautiful space for these children but at the end of the day these are caravans these are mobile portable classrooms and they are quite small and going into them oh they're waving at me um going into them and seeing three children sitting in two rows with like a very small aisle in the middle and like not a lot of space and the costumes have fans but it's hot it's freaking hot here we're in the middle east and they're learning and they're getting this education which is incredible but the the conditions that they're they're in are not the best so i don't know i'm just feeling like i'm feeling a lot of heavy things right now it's like a mixture of like sadness but also hope but also like I don't know this is really sad and 
depressing, quite frankly, circumstance. So if you want to donate, I know I've mentioned this a bunch of times, and like I'm not trying to make this like push this on anybody. I'm just trying to bring awareness to like the conditions that I'm I'm really seeing. Remember the links are down below and you can check it out and ask me questions in the comment about more information and whatnot. But super cool. I'm really I'm really happy I had the opportunity to visit um maps and the school and meet the children and do all of this because it's really it was really special and i don't think a lot of people get this opportunity and i'm so glad i could share it with you guys as well